Welcome to Tiki Central Canada. Ever wonder what's in that cool, refreshing drink that you just have to have on that hot summer's day? Mmm, me too. Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. He has left society. He has entered Tiki Central with palm trees, beach sand, blue skies, and God, get me a drink now. Here are your hosts, Craig and Cam, and their wacky views in drinks, life, and maybe information. Hey folks, and hey, how we doing? It's Craig here from Tiki Central Canada, and I'll be your, hey, okay, Cam, well, you know, wait, 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 wait your turn. Yeah, well, you know, oh, I'm I just know. excited to be back. He's so back that he's so yeah. excited. I think he's actually announced the, 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 the show from now on. Here we yeah. go. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yes, I am Craig. I'll be your host, your mixologist, and your bartender for the show today. And of course, yes, Cam is here, as you've heard. I'm the village idiot. <laughs> No, wait a minute. Ottawa's not exactly a village, but I mean, okay, we'll go with. That. Uh, you know, it's still got a small town. You're so field. primitive you are. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> we've we've got a we've got a light rail system now that's almost working. Again, we're so primitive here, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> so Who would have thought that doors would be a problem? That's hilarious how our door stops the entire system. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so also, if you'd notice there that it's kind of quiet on one end of the scale because Paula is not here. Mm-hmm. She's at her honeymoon, mm-hmm. and uh, I guess she's Lucky probably her. in yeah. Dubai. I think right now. Fair. Fancy. Saw the picture. She's skydiving today. Yeah. As long as she's not base jumping off uh, the uh, Burj Khalifa there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think that's frowned upon unless you're Tom Cruise. So. Yeah. He's the only one who could pull that off, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm sure she's like basking in the sun wherever yeah. she's at. So, uh, yeah. But I, I'm actually really glad she's not here. Uh, no offense to, to, to Paula. It's just uh. that... Uh, uh, looking at the uh, the smorgasbord oh, oh, of uh, stuff on the table in front here. of me here, I'm I'm a pretty happy camper. That uh, you know it just means more for me. I think. Well, if you think about it, if she was here, she'd be like, I can't drink any of this. Yeah, but but for somebody who doesn't drink, <laughs> she's pretty good at drinking. Oh no, for sure. Hey yeah. hey, you know hey, she's got her, she has her moments. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, this is a very special episode, so we want to explain this episode is a little different than our normal mm-hmm. format. Mm-hmm. There is no drink of the show today. There's not going to be any history of the drink today. Mm-hmm. So what we're doing is that through time, people have asked me through time, Craig, um, what kind of rum should I have on my bar? I notice every single one of your drinks is like a new rum i got to buy. What are some suggestions? And so this episode is strictly rum tasting. And I can see Cam's lips already watering as we talk about it. I'm a lucky boy, folks. <laughs> so um, we have on a table here about 10 different kinds of rum we're going to try out. Well, and it's, it's, it's amazing the, the, the differences in color of the various rums. You know, they go yes. from everything from, from clear, like a vodka, to sort of almost like a chocolate, like a dark black. chocolate black. Like molasses yeah. almost like, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we have different regions of the world here. So uh, hmm. we're going to dip through each, each and every one of these ones. And give you guys some recommendations on some of the drinks we've already done either on our show or some rec- drinks that maybe you can use it for. And then also, to some of the locations where they're from, some of the characteristics of them, and some history on them. Cool. And I get to kind of guinea pig all of these, eh? It's terrible. I know, eh? Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a hard life being me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the price you pay for being a co-host. Yeah. No, I know. Uh, I'm just wondering how I'm going to survive tomorrow's headache. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Oh, well. Yeah. (laughs) Might have to call in ill. Yeah. Well, (laughs) Not sick. Ill. Ill. (laughs) That's right. I'm not sick. Under under the weather. Under Under the weather. Yeah, yeah. Wait, is that a is that a Vancouver term? Uh, well, you're always <laughs> under some kind of weather when you're in Vancouver. That's right. And most of the time, it's damp. It's very damp and cold. Mm-hmm. You say bone chilling. Yeah, it gets in your bones. It, it absolutely does. Well, because we're at that stage now, right? Where it is, we're transitioning it from summer to fall to almost like borderline winter now, right? Well, in Ottawa, yeah, but but I'll tell you, man, we've been having 17 degree days here, and Vancouver oh, yeah. is kind of hovering. Last I checked, it's hovering around 10 degrees, and so, I guarantee uh... you, it's wet and chilly. We're basking in the sun here then, eh? Okay, yeah, right. absolutely. I I'll love take it. this. I'll, I'll take this it. any day of the week. There we go. <laughs> Including today. Including today. There we go. Well, we're in a basement in the dungeon of hell, so uh, yeah. There this we go. is true. <laughs> no sun down here. No, no. Come on, Craig. Don't call your house hell. <laughs> That's right. It is a dungeon, though. So yeah, it is a bit, yeah. Well, like I said, you know, I mean, with all these uh, sound-absorbing curtains, it looks a bit like the beginning of an episode of Dexter, or maybe the end of an episode of Dexter, but... Uh, 
So far, uh, no, no, uh, you know, stabbing. So there you go. We'll just stay on the plastic, plastic, okay? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I hadn't noticed that. Huh. Oh, funny. Wait. Well, hmm. see, probably best not. Here's to ask the theory. Why be- have it. Well, because see, you know, I can't afford to have two coasts, so somehow or another, I have to transition to one. So. Mm. <laughs> and I seduce you with rum, and then you know, it's like a kid with candy. Yeah. Note to self: Don't pass out. <laughs> Okay, so let's go through the ones we're going to do. So we're going to do the first one we're going to do is come Florida, Canada. Hmm. So, yes, yeah, yeah. so the first one is coming from Nicaragua. And this is actually is an aged rum. Hmm. And so here's some cool facts about it. So a distillation process, it's column stilled. And we'll kind of break that down in a bit there for you guys. And okay. actually what we'll do is we'll actually add videos on, like, on the episode of like what column stilled is and what pot still is. There are two okay. different processes. I see. And it's kind of hard to describe it on audio. Mm-hmm. So we'll add some visual aids for you sure. guys. Now, now, can you remind me yes. uh, what the what the distinction is between aged and non-aged rum? Or so almost everything out there is aged. Hmm. Um, so the requirements, though, when you actually put aged on it, it has to be at least three years. Okay. So okay. it means you can't just distill it and, and then, then put it into a bottle and way it go. Right. Well, tequila example. So tequila actually doesn't need to be aged. You can literally distill it and put it into a bottle and away you go. Vodka, right. same way. You don't need to age sure. it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But still I mean, if you're doing scotch or something like or that. This, yeah, or like, like the darker, whatever. the darker ones, it seems, quite honestly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, to in the distillation process, it's in white oak barrels that are used to be used for bourbon. Oh. So basically, it's got that bourbon uh, in the wood. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to get a little bit of oak and you're going to get a little bit of uh, sort of spicy. Yeah, well, I was going to say, like, I, I would expect to, like, have some sweetness to it as well. Although, I mean, I guess with mm-hmm. rum, like, you know, you're using molasses and stuff. Yeah, so you only so have sweetness it's already. Be sweet, right? Exactly, yeah. So here's some history about the Florida Canna. The distillery actually was situated on the side of a volcano. Hmm, cool. Yeah. So the volcano soil is rich in minerals. So therefore, the climate makes the aging process nice and complex and mm-hmm. an amazing spirit. Okay. Company's yeah. been around since 1890. Wow. Okay. So it's, yeah. it's been around the block a couple of times. Yeah. So what we're going to do is every one of these, we're going to smell them, mm-hmm. tell you what okay. we smell, and Here then we we're going to taste them and give you guys a kind of a, a description of exactly mm-hmm. what you're getting into. Right. Now, should I should I be sort of swirling this like one good uh, wine? Just like, or like does scotch. It... Yeah, you yeah, get a little scotch. bit of a swirl. Yeah. Right? So it kind of re- releases some of the uh, the tangents in there. Yeah. Yeah, and I actually do smell like some butterscotch in here. Uh, uh, absolutely, yeah. And a li- yeah, the vanilla for sure. I smell in that too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I smell now. I mean, maybe this is just a function of the alcohol, but but it, mm-hmm. it it's got a like like a fairly pronounced alcohol smell as well. Like but, exactly, like distinct. Well, uh, I hate to say it, but you're gonna find. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're probably well, and this is the first one. And you this know, is the and, first one yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try it without ice, just like just like scotch. So if everyone knows about scotch, what it is is that. You smell scotch or taste scotch, but as soon as you put any water or any ice in it, it actually releases a lot of the elements of the scotch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like so the rum like, is sort of the same process. Like opening it up, right? Exactly. Right. So we're going to do without the ice and then take another sip with the ice. Okay. Okay. Here, so we, go. here we go. Here we go. Okay. I definitely taste pe- mm. like pepper. Mm-hmm. Spicy. Yeah. It's very spicy because of the age process, right? So okay. we're going to get that for sure. Almonds is a kind of an aftertaste I'm getting. I don't, I, I don't actually detect the almond. Is it on the after? Well, for me anyway, I can, yeah, yeah, I yeah. can tell on the afterburn. I can taste it's a little bit. And it has got a bit of a burn. So yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. It reminds me a bit of um, uh, when I was a kid, I would raid my parents' liquor cabinet. Well, not a kid, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> no, I we know I was on six mean. years old there, you know, 1906. Um, <laughs> Uh, there, there, there's a bit of, uh, like, like blended whiskey flavor to it yeah. a little bit. I yeah. guess that's because of the bourbon barrels, mm-hmm. right? You might get a bit of the, the whiskey in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It goes down very smoothly though. Yeah, actually I'm very surprised. Um, so if you don't mind, uh, Cam, you're in charge of ice. Oh, I gotcha. Hold yeah. on. Uh, two Just pull the, here. uh, yep. We're going to pull the ice cube. There we go. I'm going to describe the situation right now. Cam is reaching into our deep ice cube. One. Make cooler. Yes, one, please. Uh, Cube? Okay, and I'll pulling out one ice cube just for me. There we go. Okay. So now we added a little bit of ice. Now, is there any kind of guideline on how long you should let no, the ice? No, just, uh, yeah, just let it, uh, here you go. Let it rip? Okay. Yeah. It does sort of subtle it down a bit. So the pepper is sure. not as present. Right. For sure. At, uh, that's, but it's actually pretty nice. I like that. It's, it's uh, yeah. W- with the, uh, with just a single cube in it, or, well, sort of odd shaped bit of ice. Um, it, Are you uh, knocking on my ice cubes? It, no, not at all. Uh, it, it smooths it out a lot and it makes it a lot easier to, um, like I don't need to concentrate on my, uh, as much on how I'm, how I'm actually swallowing. Correct. W- without, you know, kind of getting a, 
<laughs> you know, smooth it's kind of smooth. sense. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. So this is also a good rum for mixing, obviously, into a drink, like say a navy grog, or even if you're doing a mai tai, you might actually want to add that as one of the rums you're going to use. Mm-hmm. Um, but as you can see, like we were talking with Cam there, you could actually just add this on ice on the rocks, mm-hmm. and it's a nice slow sipping cocktail. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be you know sucking this back super fast. No, no, this is like a that. sipping. Yeah, if you're. By the way, folks. Yeah, for most of these rums, if you are drinking them straight. Uh, neat or in the rocks, it is a sipping process. It's yeah. like drinking scotch. You're not going to woof it down. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, what what does a bottle of this run? So a bottle of that is going to run you, it is a little more expensive, about 35 to $40. Okay, but that's and not Canada. For, for, it's not yeah. too bad. For an, H, for an H rum, that is not too bad. Yeah, and it's 750 mil, so, you know, you're exactly. looking at, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little more expensive, but not, uh, you know, it's not breaking the bank. No, no, for sure. Oh. Yeah. All right, so that is the nice. first one. Okay, I'll put this aside. Well, and I, I can, I now can feel it. it uh, I can feel it. Are well, you nice and warm and tingling? Yeah, now? I was about to say no. Like I've got a bit of a flush going. I'm you know what? Gonna... Actually, this is a good time to do this episode though, because we're going into a cold season. Yeah, absolutely. So and it's a good Halloween time. Halloween's just around the corner. Canadian Thanksgiving is literally around the corner. Yeah, it is this weekend, pretty yeah, well. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's good to do this episode because then people will be sitting there like in the winter time and like, what do I want to drink? Mm-hmm. And if you're not a Scotch drinker, like I'm not a scotch drinker whatsoever yeah. um this is a good substitute yeah. this is a good like you know well and it's sweeter than than scotch you exactly know? yeah for sure yeah. all right so cool. you're gonna grab the next one there okay so and that's so the, the next one is cruising the... uh-huh. cruising yes there we are this is an aged as well yeah so so this is like if you're uh you know wandering the streets looking for love <laughs> um, cruising all right so the next rum we're gonna do here is actually cruising rum much lighter color Yes, it is actually, it's very, it's almost like, yeah, so let's just talk about colors as well. Mm-hmm. So this is what, would you call this, like almost a yellowish? Yeah, like, so the interesting thing is, is that this without ice appears similar to the Florida, Florida Canna with, with ice. ice. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, no, a, a translucent. But um, it looks kind of like gold, like if you were doing. Yeah, or yeah. caramel. Caramel, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. Yeah, and so, okay, so let's just go through this one. So the location of this one is from St. Croix, which is the U.S. Virgin Islands. This is an aged gold rum, actually, and like we just said, actually, it does okay. look, kind of look like a gold rum. Yeah. The history of it is really kind of cool. So the distillery actually was founded in 1760. Jeepers. And, I know, way, yeah. way back then, before, before my time. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. So they actually claim in the distinction of the most honorable rum distillery in the world... And the largest supplier of American private and distributor labeled rum. Hmm. Now, so I also think I've told in the past, we actually have done Cruisin' Rum in one of our profiles. Cruisin' actually got its name because in St. Croix, the population of St. Saint, Saint Croix, sorry, mm-hmm. is called Cruisin'. Okay. So if you live there, that's you're that's called. You're right. called Cruisin's. I see. Okay. And that's where it came from. So let's go through the distillation process. So it is a five-column distill. Okay. And again, we're going to show those videos to just kind of explain yeah. the, how that now, works. It, it, is there a distinction between like like five column, four column? Is it like like yeah. a so like for each m- more and more you're refinement? Adding, you're, you're refining it more and more. So, sort of the equivalent. Uh, I know with like lots of vodkas, you know, they add they they, they like an advertising uh, comment will be you know triple triple charcoal charcoal, charcoal filtered and that type of exactly. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Now triple charcoal is a different thing because what okay. you're doing is you're actually washing out the elements. Okay. No. Okay. This so is this adding is, to the elements. This is specific. Okay. So this is triple or, or quintuple distilled, essentially. Exactly, yes. Wow, okay. Yeah, and uh, it's actually aged in charred American oak barrels mm-hmm. for two to four years minimum. Okay. And the proof of this is 80 proof, so 40% alcohol, right. just like everything else we do. Right. Okay, yeah, so let's uh, see what it smells yeah. like. Okay, so smell that. Lots of vanilla. Lots and yeah. lots of vanilla. For sure, vanilla. And it's very subtle. Like it's not like you said the very first one was very like boozy almost like mm-hmm. yeah like like not, almost medicinal but this, this is, is not this is boozy at all yeah. like it's not no not like like potent. this is the type of thing that if I didn't know um, it contained alcohol would be sort of a tasty treat with cake kind of no, thing no for you sure know? yeah no for sure um, yeah okay so okay. let's uh, give it a swirl and see what yeah. we say here okay it's a little more peppery than it smells oh with yeah absolutely yeah. So no, the, the smell actually... is very subtle, but the taste is very like kick. Yeah, no, and I'd say like it smells sweet, but the flavor is is peppery. Peppery, yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost like a a nutty licorice kind of. Uh... Oh, you're getting some like like anise or um, 
like yeah, the licorice it's almost flavor. a nut kind of yeah, yeah, or the kind of like there's nuts, like there's some sort of nutty flavor in mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. All right, nice. so All right, uh, Mr. Let's get the ice. Uh, I guess get the ice and see how this works. Good thing I washed my hands before this. Oh, eh? oh, oh th- I had never thought of that one. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. I was and raised I did, right. And I did pick Cam off the street, so I don't know That's what's going to happen there. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I, so I was cruising. Uh, done and done. All right, so okay. with, with ice. With ice. Okay, it's yeah, it's not. It's still peppery. Still peppery and like like the 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 strong vanilla um, mm-hmm. smell is still there. Yeah, it actually has a burn to it at the end of it. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, on the tongue. Yeah. On the tongue. Yeah. But it actually, it, with the ice, it feels like the flavors blend a little bit better. So yeah. it is, it, it, there isn't sort of a distinct, almost like an on-off switch between yeah. the the odor and the taste. Yeah, exactly. Whereas initially it was like, okay, it smelled vanilla yeah. and sweet, but then it's kind of like... Peppery. Peppery, yeah. So it's kind of, now it's complementing it in some oh, ways, yeah. for sure. Well, yeah, so you can use it in, let's say, a pina colada. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can use it in a painkiller. A navy grog, of course, you could do that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have written down there. Yes. So, is, is yes. there a big distinction between rums you would use in a mix, like like to, like to make a cocktail, and mm-hmm. rums that are sort of more specific for sipping by themselves, like not necessarily straight, but but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So no, so good question. So what it is is that some of these rums, when you combine them together, or with other elements, actually will give you a very distinctive taste. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to find that out example, like this of the Pusu's rum for sure. We're going to see that mm-hmm. and the Gossing, which is a very dark rum. Okay. Uh, there's lots of molasses in there. So sure. that is going to bring out that into a drink if you're mixing it mm-hmm. and it tastes like a, a, a on a neat perspective, like us on its own. Uh, we can already see already there's a difference between those two already. Without question. Right. Yeah. I mean, one smells sweet and it's got a pepper kind of vanilla taste to it. And mm-hmm. the other one was more of uh, b- butterscotch. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, they, they both have uh, notes of vanilla, but absolutely in terms of, of the smell. Yeah. Uh, the, the, totally different. The, the, the cruising is, is much more pronounced. Exactly. It's, like you said, it's got that sweet smell to it. Mm-hmm. Whereas, it's a bit deceptive, actually. Yeah. And so the, the, in the Florida can, it was very, you could smell the booze. Mm-hmm. Like it's very boozy, yeah. right? Medicinal. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's that one. Mm-hmm. All right, very good. Okay, so pass me the bottle. We're going to just sort of sure. knock them off as we go along here. Probably a good plan. Uh, yeah, keep the bottles off the desk there. Yeah, so I don't knock sh- them off the desk. Or that, or you, I just turn my back and like, yeah. wait, <laughs> there was a bottle there a second ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, Cam, I had to go what, all the way down. bump under my shirt? No, no, no. That's just a weird growth I've got. I had to go all the way to St. Thomas to get that bottle now. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> So, well, it's funny. So I have to tell people. So we we have kids in the house, and it's funny because when I I first moved in and started growing this this repertoire of rums and liquor and just in general, mm-hmm. um, you know, like we all did it when we we're you know when you're a teenager or oh, your friends course, come over yeah. and like, hey, let's raid let's your medicine. Yeah. Let's raid your mom's medicine. You know, your liquor cabinet, liquor right? Yeah. Well, I had to explain to him like, you know. Here's some bottles that if you're going to raid, take these ones yeah. almost like <laughs> like like don't don't take any, but if you're going to, to these are the ones you're gonna take because right. some of these are like I'm never gonna be able to get them again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's and, like... and and then we won't have any murders in this house. That's right. right. So if you want to live, <laughs> you'll leave these bottles alone. <laughs> right oh. <laughs> okay, so you going on to the next one. This is called Plantation. This actually is a, when I just bought this very recently. Okay. It's so it's Plantation rum. It's three years uh, pale rum. Now it says it says three stars right there on the front. Yes. So let me explain. I and mean, actually, you can see it right on the bottle. Mm-hmm. So what does it say underneath the three stars there? Uh, it's three... Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad. Right. So what it is, those three stars are the top rum producers in Caribbean. I see. In, sorry, in the Caribbean islands. Yeah. So this actually is a blend of Jamaica, Barbados, and oh, Trinidad. okay. Okay. And it's all three areas. Right. So let's go through that. So what it is, is that Plantation actually is a blender. They don't make their own rum. I understand. So yeah. what they do is they buy rum from these three different countries, and then they blend it together mm-hmm. and come up with this product called Plantation. Mm-hmm. Barbados is twin column and pot stilled. I see. Trinidad is column stilled. Mm-hmm. And Jamaica is pot stilled. Okay. Yeah. In old cognac barrels. I see. Okay. Yes. So there's some history of this. So let's just talk about this. So the history of this is actually Alexander Gabriel, who's the president and owner of the Cognac Fernand. I see. So actually he made cognac 
Okay, yeah, no, I, I was I was actually, that's the word I was looking for with the initial one, the fleur, or, or, or pardon me. Fleur de canna. Yeah, the fleur de canna is that it had a bit of a cognac-y oh, okay. feel to it. Yeah. Like a brandy taste to it. Yeah. Very nice. So this guy used to make cognac, and so then he also got into the business of rum. Mm-hmm. And so the barrels that he makes cognac in are super demand. Like everybody wants them. Okay. Well, he actually uses those barrels to make this, this rum. Mm-hmm. Very good. So actually, what's cool about this too is that the Jamaican portion of the rum is composed of two Jamaican styles. Oh. The unaged rum, which contributes to that Jamaican funk. So it's got a bit of a funk to it. Okay. And a small amount of very expensive 12-year-old rum. I see. So they took two different rums in Jamaica so and like... blended them together to make the Jamaican part of that. So really, I mean, although this is this is blended from three from rums from three separate uh, locations. They've also blended as They've well. They've been blended as well. So wow. we got so a blend lots of, a blend. of blending here. Right. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay. That's the history of it. So actually, like I said, it comes from Barbados, Jamaica, and Trinidad, mm-hmm. and it is a light rum. So this is a okay. pale rum. Yeah. Something that you would use for like making, like say, a daiquiri or something. Something yeah. that is light rum. So a daiquiri or a pina colada, something that is, requires white or light rum. Right. Now, now I have to admit, I'm a little bit trepidatious about this because... White rum and I have a have have a a, a, yes. a bumpy a, a rocky history, if you will. Well, so, so uh, let's explain salsa too. So white rum for me, anyways, I don't know about you. Mm-hmm. White rum is go, it goes through the charcoal process, mm-hmm. right? And so what it ends up happening is they strip away some of the characteristics of it. We will see. Obviously, there's gonna be some characteristics in this. Yeah. But I f- I find that white rum's almost on the same characteristics as vodka. Yeah. Like the burn process mm-hmm. and the, mm-hmm. the taste is not as, it's not much there. Yeah. It's kind of subtle. Well, yeah. And it's got Which sort is... of a weird aftertaste. It, like, like it's not yeah. a vodka aftertaste. It's a rum, a white rum aftertaste. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, in some ways, when you're making, a, say, a pina colada or you're making a daiquiri, you don't mm-hmm. want a rum that's going to be pronounced. It's going to overbear. Yeah, like on the sugars and everything you've got in well, there. What's going to take right? away from yeah. all the other characteristics? Like, say, yeah. some pina colada, you don't want to take away from the banana and the coconut. You no. want those to be prominent, right? You want those yeah. to be up front. So this is kind of like fills the gap of the alcohol content, but doesn't actually bring anything to the table as a way of taste in a mixed drink. Sure. Now, as a single on its own, we're going to find out. Mm-hmm. So let's just take a smell of this and see what it smells like. Oh, this actually isn't uh, quite it's as horrible like a as I was rose. It's got, oh, what is that <laughs> smell? There, there's a tiny bit of vodka. Yeah. Or, or yeah, like vodka. It's like and mint. A little Are you bit... smelling mint or anything? I'm getting or candy a like? very, yes, almost um, sweet like, like candy. I'm, I'm still getting a little bit of vanilla. Mm-hmm. But then, sort of like like almost a uh, like an artificial candy flavor. flavor yeah, right. and actually, uh, I don't know about you, but I can smell like almost orange peel in there. A little bit of yeah. Oh, well, maybe that's what I'm smelling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it actually does have quite a lot of mm-hmm. layers to it, There's which is weird because for too, a, I think. for a white rum. So let's okay. just give that a sip. Okay, so it's soft on the palate. Very soft. It almost, it's, it's, if there's any layers to it, it's very hidden. Like it's, it's, it's not like very any, subtle. There's nothing yeah. prominent in there. It's just sort of there, you know? I'm tasting, I'm tasting the orange more than I was smelling it actually, yeah. or like the citrus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and there's so a little bit of, a, a little bit of smoke. Yeah. Some smoke in there. There's some orange in there I could sort of taste. Yeah. I could smell and probably taste a little bit of the mint as it's in there as well. And it's supposed to be also to a real impression of. I have to admit, this is significantly sugar in there, but that's oh, like maybe really, not. Yeah, 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 maybe that's what it is. Brown it, sugar. This, this is a significantly tastier white rum than the old Bacardi I used to get in trouble. Well, with. Well, the thing with Bacardi, <laughs> and, 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 and I use Bacardi for some drinks, but sure. the problem is that Bacardi strips it so much. Yeah, it just it loses all of its character, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Mm-hmm. No, so uh, yeah, it, it, it smells great. It's 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 subtle. So this is like if you're new into rums, this is probably a good one to start off with. It's not overpowering. And in any guess way. what? The price on this was twenty four dollars. Oh, brilliant. So it's a good price for a good rum. Yeah. This actually would be a good rum to use for a white rum and all of our recipes instead of the Bacardi. Mm-hmm. Again, Adds I'm not trying to knock. It gets yeah. a little more character to it, and yeah. you're going to get a little more of a balance to it, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree on the balance uh, mm-hmm. part. There, there, there isn't that weird, for me anyway, the, the, the weird Bacardi aftertaste. Exactly, yeah. yeah. All right, Cam, so you uh, all right, have I'm your the job. Ice man. You're the Iceman. Iceman, Iceman. <laughs> there we go. And the funny thing is, like the ice, the, the tray is below the table level, so I'm not quite sure exactly where he's getting the ice from. But yeah. just <laughs> best, best not to ask. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, so we've mixed some ice into this now. 
Interestingly, I can smell more of the alcohol. Yeah, it does bring up the alcohol. Now yeah. it does, yeah. I can yeah. smell more of the alcohol content of it. And it actually does have more of that vodka burn to it now. Yeah. Wow, that's really weird. So... I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have expected that, yeah. Don't be adding ice to this then, I guess. <laughs> I, I would tend to agree, actually. Yeah, it, it tasted so, better um, and neat. actually more subtle. Neat, yeah. 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 Oh, cool. so let's explain that if you haven't listened to the show before. So neat means that you're adding no ice to it. It's just straight mm-hmm. up whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also hear the word too, straight up. Mm-hmm. That also means neat and straight no up, ice. Straight up, tell me exactly. it's going to be you Oh and my me God, it's Cam's karaoke hour here. Yeah. Um, and then when like, you hear uh, on the rocks, that's... Paula Abdul. <laughs> you had a fantasy about her, didn't you? I mean, a fantasy. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, this is about tiki cocktails. We don't have time for your fantasy. Just, you uh, know, ploy there. <laughs> dreaming about maybe saying hi if I bumped into her on the street. What the hell were you thinking about, you weirdo? <laughs> wait, wait. Is she on your list? No. Oh, okay. Because me, me and Paula talked about that one episode. There's like, you know, we all have our yeah, list. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. No. No. So, uh, actually, so our recommendation is, yeah. So drinks for this would be like the daiquiri or uh, pina colada, anything with white rum. Um, but if you're going to drink it, drink it straight or neat, mm-hmm. I think is the, the way I would go. I don't know about you. I, no, I, I, I'd agree actually. I mean, obviously don't overdo it, but, uh, yes. um, it, it was more it's, drinkable without the ice. As soon as we added ice, it's almost like it just added booze to it. Like yeah. it just added like the alcohol content to it. And it's just a 41.2% alcohol. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's a little higher than norm. Yeah. There we go. And, uh, yeah. So that is the plantation. Very tasty. There we go. Okay, so this is Pooch's rum. Okay. So. Okay, now this is this is definitely a, a caramelly. It's darker than I think it's darker than the uh, f- uh, uh, the uh, Florida f- Canna. F- f- Florida Canna. Right, I'm not. Let's see here. I'm gonna put that there beside you there. Oh yeah, without there question. Yeah. yeah. So it's darker than the Florida Canna. Yeah. But this yeah. is funny. This is not a dark rum. No. No. Oh. This is not a dark. Okay. Uh, rum. It is it's, obviously it's, aged. I mean, all yeah, rums yeah. are aged. But, but it's kind of sort of more of a middle of the road color, I guess. Yeah, but also too, it is. It is also a blend. Okay. Um, it does say on the bottle aged three years. So basically, mm-hmm. it's obviously three years is the requirement. Mm-hmm. It is forty-two percent alcohol. This one as well. Okay. Uh, so this is a British rum. Right, and the, 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 isn't this the this one? This is one we've talked about a lot. Yeah, so so in the Navy, this would be, th- this is the one where some of the... Uh, Sailors would be portioned out on their right. daily rations. Right, From 1655, actually, mm-hmm. all the way to uh, 1970, where we have talked about Black Tot Day. Right. It wasn't available to the public until 1979. Mm-hmm. So it took nine years after Black Tot for them to say, well, we well, got the I surplus. Well, the thing that's cool about it is, so every time you buy a bottle of Pooch's Rum, by the way, folks, you are contributing to the British Retirement Fund. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some of the money goes towards the Retirement Fund for the British Navy. So you actually are doing a good cause. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's a blend. Here's another blend again. It's right. from Jamaica, Trinidad, the British Guyana, and Barbados. So all four, four. of those okay. are blended into this. Okay. Yeah, those are all actually were all original British territories. Sure. Yeah, no, I guess that makes sense. Some of them are not yeah. now, but they, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so the distilling process, pr- sorry, pr- pr- seeing uh, four rums in and already pressing. Uh, the, the distilling process is uh, it's a navy strength rum, so it's fifty four point five percent alcohol. I think we see that. Okay. Down the, here. Yeah, no, the stuff that it we've got, 42. it looks like forty two. So yeah, if you're in the states, it's fifty. Right. Yeah, no, for the Canadian market, they probably have to lower it down. Yeah, because it's, it's not considered like an overproof yeah. rum. Bastards. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So, anyways, it's distilled in double wooden pot stills. So it's a it's a double pot stills, but it's double process. Mm-hmm. And it's aged in charcoal oak bourbon barrels. Another bourbon barrel. A lot of these rums you're gonna find are actually in bourbon barrels. Yeah. So uh, Man, Americans try, try saying that like three times fast. Three times bourbon, bourbon barrel, bourbon barrel, bourbon, bourbon, bourbon barrels. barrels. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I did pretty good on that one. Uh, so, like I said, yeah, so the history of this, like I said, it was 1655. Uh, it was portioned out to the Navy SEAL, uh, Navy SEAL, <laughs> and yeah, again, the Navy sailors. Right. On uh, daily rations, mm-hmm. it would be twice a day. Right. And then eventually, like we said, Black Tot, 1970, they stopped rationing it out. Right. Because they couldn't operate the, the ships. The... Yeah, no, suddenly all this technology got in the way. It's like, damn, I had to push a button now. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's have a smell. Let's sure. see what it smell like. Okay. To me, it's got a really, like, a very brandy-ish odor. I'd say, yeah, some, yeah. It's, it's, it definitely has a brandy or, a, like, a con, like you said, connect smell to yeah. it. And the the uh, uh, the alcohol is present, but it's not the... Overbearing. Yeah, it's not the main smell. No, no. Yeah, because it, 
it's almost like, you know, when we talked about a, the bourbon or the, the, the alcohol smell, mm-hmm. it's almost like it's burning your nose. Yeah. This is not burning my nose. No, it's just, it's, like, it's just a little tickle. It's whereas, subtle. Um, some, like sometimes the alcohol smell, it almost smells like, like, you know, like rubbing alcohol or yeah. something. Like it's really kind of a exactly. bit of a smack in the face. No, this is definitely. Okay. Okay. So let's try the old, uh, taste. Definitely got the alcohol taste in there. Oof, yeah. It's peppery. Yep. It's got a bit of pepper in there. There's um, right on the back of my tongue. I've got a bit of chocolate. Yeah. So it's, it says here butterscotch and molasses. Yeah. Okay. No, that um, could be it. Slight tinge of maybe a small tinge of caramel in there. Not much, but yeah, I can taste that. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely say more butterscotch than, than butterscotch caramel. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And the molasses in there. Cause like it's, well, if you've ever had molasses when you're a kid, it's like, it's, yeah. uh, well, and it's on the after breath. Like I can, I can taste yeah. it through my nose when I'm breathing out after <laughs> I've, uh, like, I, I don't know what the right term is for I know, that. That's but, hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's try her with, okay, uh, uh, with some ice rocks. All right, ice man, uh, give me a shot there. Here we go. And no, those were not sound effects. That's the, the that's <laughs> a real real McCoy. That's right. <laughs> okay, so toned it down quite a bit. Yeah, you see, I'm finding yeah. at least smell wise, it still smells the, the, the same. The the molasses is really uh, like to me still... anyway. It 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 sticks out a bit more. Yeah. And uh, you still, it's, it's, it's weird because you can still smell like the alcohol, like you said, sort of tickling your throat, Definitely. like the smell, your nose, I mean, sorry, tickling your nose, but then the taste is subtle down. It's, it's narrowed yeah, down. It, it's, it's interesting actually, because the alcohol taste, I think it has remained the same. Yeah. It's just that the other flavors have been muted. And well, so like the it, pepper. Yeah, is, yeah. And so the, the alcohol flavor comes out a bit stronger. Mm-hmm. So what would this one be good for? So this is actually the one they use for the painkiller. Um, and actually that is a registered cocktail, which means that if you buy a painkiller at a bar, they actually mm-hmm. have to use Pooster's rum. Okay. So it's sort of copyrighted. Written. Exactly. Copyrighted. Copyrighted. Um, no, copyrighted, I think. Okay, Mr. Uh, English professor over there. Well, I know. I just, you know, <laughs> like to and get these things correct. Exactly. And then the rum, uh, Swizzler. So if you go down to our episodes and you go to the rum Swizzler, which actually was from Bermuda, mm-hmm. um, they use Pooster's rum for that as well, because obviously one of the products that comes from this is from Bermuda. Sure. Yeah. So those are two drinks that you can use this for. So what's your recommendation? Do you think this is like, could you use this as a, on its own or what do you, what's your uh, thoughts on that? So I'm, I'm really tasting like the aftertaste is quite molasses-y. Right. And I'm not a huge fan of molasses. Exactly. Um, I think it would, you know, I mean, we're just sipping a little bit here, uh, folks. We're yeah. not, uh, you know, sucking these back. No. But I, I feel that like, you know, if I had like a couple of glasses of, of it, so to speak. Yeah. I think yeah. that even though like it, it, it doesn't seem sticky or anything, mm-hmm. it, it's almost tricking me into feeling like... Yeah. Like my, my lips are like dry now. Yeah, but but it's like I've got like you know stickiness on the sides of my lips. So I'm yeah, not sure. Exactly. I'm not sure I'd be keen to drink it uh, on its own. Yeah, like no, it probably is a good mixer. Okay. Um, good for cocktails for mm-hmm. sure, obviously, especially those two drinks in particular because they have history. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, if it's on its own, I think this would probably be if you're starting out of rums. Mm-hmm. This would probably would not be one that you want to try on its on own. On its own, right. for sure. We'll give that recommendation for sure. Okay, so the next one we're going to try here is mm-hmm. the Bacardi Reserva. Is that right to say? Reserva? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. So Bacardi Reserva, eight-year rum. Okay, and we were just, you know, dissing Bacardi, so. I uh... know. <laughs> but in our defense, this is not the white rum. So Definitely the... not. No, Definitely no. not. This is an aged rum Beautiful for sure. Beautiful caramel color, really. Exactly, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Yes, this is one of my favorite bottles. Actually, I use quite a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I use a lot of it is because um, the Mai Tai actually casts for all these different blends of rums and stuff. Sure. I find that uh, this is a good one to use if you just want to use one rum mm-hmm. on a Mai Tai. Okay. And a lot of people that have drank my Mai Tai say that they love the, the finish, the rum finish that comes okay. off it. Right. So we're going to try this and then you'll be able to tell me exactly what you think. Okay. Now, and, and this is, well, give me some details about this rum because okay. you mentioned, is it a blended rum? This is a blended rum. Okay. So okay. the the youngest rum that's in there is eight years old. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So there's going to be several blends of rum in there. Mm-hmm. And so what it is also too, folks, let me just explain something when you buy a bottle of something, uh, we probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the show, is that when you buy a bottle, say, of anything, rum, whiskey, bourbon, those ones basically as well, mm-hmm. um, not so much vodka and tequila, but more of those other, but vodka, but other ones, uh, what ends up happening is that the, the brewmaster or so the distiller what he's going to do is he's going to taste all the different barrels that are on that batch. Right. And uh, then he has other batches, obviously, from different years. 
Sure. Right. And so what ends up happening is that he actually will take the best barrels of that year and then blend them with other years. So when it says eight years, and I said, like, this is the youngest one that's in here, mm-hmm. this could have an eight year old in here, a 10 year old, a 12 year old, mm-hmm. whatever, all blended. And actually, the eight year olds should not be drinking. <laughs> that's it. Exactly. I know. Yeah. I've always like thought that, like, that's going to be some crazy ass job, eh? Yeah. Like, you're just tasting rum all day long. My goodness. And then just say, well, uh, barrel number two, yeah, barrel number five, yeah. and barrel number ten. It must require like like the, the the constitution of a gorilla just to like you know maintain your senses. Exactly. I mean, even like because even I mean you know I've been we're just sipping I've been just sipping little bits, but but it it's uh, you it's got know some kick to it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like you must have some serious. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, tolerance. Yeah, like a strong like, constitution. Did, did, you, did you know? he build that up or something? Like through time, I guess. Practice, <laughs> practice, practice. <laughs> That's what they always said about the violin, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we must practice, practice, practice. Hey, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? <laughs> One step at a time. That's right. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. Oh god. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so this actually is a Puerto Rico rum, okay. and it actually is aged, like we said. Mm-hmm. And so it was created in 1862 from Bacardi, mm-hmm. and it actually is one of the oldest private rum blends in the world. Hmm. Yes. Now, if you know anything about Bacardi, and we talked about this, I think, in episode three or five, no, sorry, five, I think it was with Cuba. Bac- uh, Bacardi actually originally was on Cuba. Right. So if you notice, there's actually the bat symbol on the front of the Bacardi. Right. So what ended up was that he actually bought a pr- plantation, mm-hmm. and on the plantation, there was caves. And the okay. caves actually had, had bats. bats. Right. And so that became the symbol that we see now on the top of Bacardi. I see. I see. But Bacardi went from Cuba, and then what happened was that Castro came into play. Right. And said that we're going to take all your assets. And of course, Bacardi mm-hmm. was like, uh, no. Right. Right. Um, so, so then they, they moved to Puerto Rico. And I the see. reason why they went to Puerto Rico is because in Puerto Rico, when they bottled this, they actually don't have to pay any duties. Right. Because it's American territory. Exactly. Right. And yeah, so they don't pay any duties when they actually make this Bacardi. Okay. I think that's all I have for the history. So let's, mm-hmm. oh, oh, no, sorry. Let's go to the distillation process. So again, sure. column still distilled, mm-hmm. and again, aged uh, oak barrels. Okay. So the smell, it does, you can, it's very subtle. It's yep. not, not very overpowering at all. No, it's, it, it smells very smooth. I mean, there, there is, there is the hint of alcohol and a hint of, you know, the brandy or the cognac, but not, not oh. as strong. I definitely smell like, like, again, caramel in there. Um, there's a sweetness. A sweetness to it, like maybe vanilla or something. Yeah, yeah, just um, like sort sort of... Uh, and cinnamon, I think, and it gets smell on that too, I think. Like kind of that pepper, like this, you know, like yeah. that cinnamon has like that yeah. spicy to it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, so that's what we got. And like you said, it's like kind of a gold yeah. color. Yeah. So we'll go, we'll go, okay, we'll, we'll wash this down. Here we go. Okay, so that's not as strong as I thought it was going to be. No, that that's very it's smooth. very subtle. Yeah. Superly subtle. It's so subtle, like... I, it's nice, actually. Like, I could I could see myself, you know, sitting so, by a crackling fire, you know, it's having gonna a snifter nice of this. Nice and you know? toasty warm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can tell me about it. And uh, nice and warm now. Yeah. Um, well, no, I mean, so it's, it's kind of nice to be down here. I was chilly when we first came down, but I've been um, warming, sure up, warming nicely. up nicely. Yeah. So, again, I can taste the caramel on there. I don't know what you're smelling. I, I can taste a little bit of oak, maybe? Yeah. Well, and it's got a bit of a bite at the end. If, uh, yeah, at the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, De- definitely some oak. Definitely yeah, some oak, yeah. Oak in there, because it's a bit of barrel, scotchiness, right? yeah. Yeah, Scott, yeah, exactly. I was yeah. just about to say that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so let's add an ice cube into that. Let's Soy see how me. we get there. And so this is one of the reasons why, actually, also, too, I picked this for the Mai Tai, because it is being the only rum in the Mai Tai, it could, as you can see, it's not overbearing. It's not no, going it's not. to uh, bring the drink down. Yeah. Uh, because it is, you know, you're dealing with a tropical drink. You don't want it to be, like, boozy. Just, yeah, pure... Pure rum flavor. Right. So it kind of helps in that. Uh, com- com- okay, so we've added the ice, as you can yeah. hear. There we go. Okay, so it heightened the elements a little bit. Yeah, and I know. It's, it's much more, more muted. The booze has definitely come out a little bit more. Or, yeah. yeah. The alcohol's come on a little bit more. Yeah. The burn's almost gone, though, at the end, like the end, yeah. end taste. Yeah, no, it doesn't have the bite. There's sort of a... there. I, I have, like, the tip of my tongue, I've got some spiciness going on there. Yeah. Um, but um, not at the back of my tongue anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, has a smell change for you as well? Uh, stronger alcohol smell, but I, yeah. like, like we were saying, I think it's just maybe the other smells have been kind of muted a muted little down, bit by yeah, the, yeah. by the water. I think I, th- this is another one that I preferred it's without neat. ice. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. yeah. For sure. So there we go. So that is the Bacardi mm-hmm. 8. So if you're doing a lot of tr- uh, tiki cocktails and mm-hmm. you're like, Craig, I can't really afford to go off and buy like, you know, 10 different bottles of rum. Mm-hmm. This is a good rum to use for almost anything that needs other than white rum. So say it's something that needs something aged or sure. dark yeah. or whatever, 
this is a good room to use for this. And this is about $30. So it's not too bad. It's good in the price range. Mm -hmm. um, you're getting a really good product, I think, for that, for, you know, eight year, being eight years old at mm -hmm. least. Mm -hmm. And they, it's very subtle. So, yeah, you could say you could, you could sniff this in a sniffer, like yeah. have this on its own, yeah. and you're fine. No, I'd, I'd be perfectly happy to, to sip away at this. I'm sure you would. Well, <laughs> yeah. We have other rums to drink there, uh, Excellent. Kim. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. Yep. <laughs> go. All right, so we're going to do the El Dorado. Okay, City go. of Gold. Is that what it means? El Dorado, yeah. Oh, I, I think not, so. I did not know that. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah. it wasn't... Um, uh, yeah, there was somebody or other searching for uh, El Dorado. Gold. It's yeah. all gold. Huh. Cool. So, okay, so we're going to do the El Dorado Demira Rum. So, okay. Demira. So, let's explain what Demira Rum. So, Demira Rum actually is like, so, you know when you make a coffee and you make with white sugar, right? They taste a certain way. Sure. I, well, I don't usually, but yes, I, I understand okay, so the this is, this is a symbolism here. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, so if you use, like, white sugar on your coffee. Now, imagine making your coffee with a brown, brown sugar. sugar. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is obviously going to have more of a molasses, molasses, sweeter taste to it. Okay. And it's from Guyana. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yes, from Guyana. And so the distillation process is it's a four-column distilled, mm -hmm. put into American bourbon oak. Man, okay. These this guys are just selling oak. oak. Yeah. Uh, they make, they're making a fortune just on the barrels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd sell the whiskey, but, but uh, uh, the barrels yeah. make more money. So uh, here we go. There's gold in them bar barrels. So in Guyana, because of the high humidity and the steady temperature, it's much easier to make this, obviously, this rum. And you will see it, actually, in the taste of it. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, it's blended. F so we have two different age brackets we're doing here. We're going to do the five-year first. Okay. And then the 12-year. Okay, but otherwise, they're the same, like, conceptually, they're the same rum. Process. Okay. So yeah. it's distilled. It's column distilled and all this mm -hmm. stuff. And, and the oak, uh, bourbon barrels. So the history of this is Demir Distillers Limited, so DDL, mm -hmm. was actually by the British in the 1650s. Okay. And so another really old... You know, quite yeah. frankly, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now the actual, so this rum's been made since the 1650s, mm -hmm. but the company El Dorado actually has only been around since 1992. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's relatively a new company in in the aspects, but the rum is eight. It's been around for a long, long time. I see. Okay. Yeah. So they, so it's, this is a the five year we're gonna do now. Okay. So we're gonna smell this. A lot of butter. Yeah. Really, really buttery. Oh yeah, for sure. There's something else in there too. Caramel, though. butter, um, a bit of butterscotch in there. There's mm -hmm. some, it's a, a, almost um, marzipan, so almond. Oh, okay, almond. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Okay. So it's yeah, it's it's, it's very it's not um, not boozy at all on the on not, the nose. It's none very whatsoever. Subtle. Yeah. It's very soft. Okay, so let's just okay. Okay, so there's almost zero burn. It literally, it, there is. It's very subtle. There's yep. it, there's almost no burn. zero burn at all. I mean, you have to taste it again. So. A lot of viscosity. It's viscous. Like, it's got a thickness to it. Yeah, it definitely is. Just like taste the, the caramel in there. There's some oak, obviously, from the aging process. I really like this one. It, I like the butteriness of it. Yeah, and the and, butter. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, so okay. we're going to add Let's some ice. There you go. This sucker oh, yeah, up. It's a sucker up. Here we go. And uh, by the way, folks, we appreciate you guys listening to this because I know some people kind of like, well, let's get back to the regular show, Craig. But uh, we thought we'd bring this episode out because so many people have been asking us, like, what rums should right. I have? Craig, I don't want to buy 20 different rums. What are some recommendations? Mm -hmm. So we, this is what we're doing this for. All right. So with ice. Mm -hmm. Caramel comes out much stronger. Oh, yeah, for sure. I can smell the caramel. Oh, but maybe it's butterscotch. I... Uh... No, yeah, vanilla and uh, butterscotch in there. Like this is a, it's, it seems, I guess, a very common thing in all these rums, eh? Yeah. It's like, uh, the yeah. Well, well, at least molasses, in, in, right? in the yeah, yeah, in the dark well. rums. Yeah. Again, super subtle, no burn. Yeah, no, and no, no and sort of overwhelm, like no, no alcohol. Now, I don't know about you, but almost like the ice almost washed it out. Yeah. Like the smell's still there. Yeah, but the flavor is it's completely uh, gone. Yeah. Like it's it's almost like it's washed out. So. Again, another one that if you want to do this as a, as a yeah. soft, uh, neat. Yeah. Wow. Because usually, you know what? It's funny because like, like when I went to a scotch class, they say that they had the ice and then when it, I opens it, with it, it, up. Yeah. it opens it up. So yeah. this is almost like it does the reverse. It yeah. kind of brings up the alcohol, but then everything else shuts down. Well, and I, I also, I, I'm wondering also if there's a temperature, a, a function of temperature because like it's no, colder. that's a good point. It's colder now um, yeah. and there's, there's more liquid in it. Like it's not as thick as it tasted mm -hmm. before. But true, uh, it's very light now. And yeah, and the odor. It's the same odor, almost. Yeah, but but much the less. The taste is yeah. it's washed right out. Yeah. 
So, okay, so again, this is a good one for mixing for if you need an aged rum. This was about $30. It so wasn't too bad. $30 to $35. Let me correct that again. But yeah, if you're drinking it on its own, um, neat again. We, 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 yeah. I guess we have to re emphasize that again. Yeah. But it, it, the Demera rum. So yeah, you see getting a lot more of that, like you said, the butter. Yeah. The butterscotch. The, yeah, it's, it's very nice. I like that. That's good. Yeah, I got to agree. All right, so... On to the 12 year. So, so this is, okay, 12 years. So same formulation, so to same speak. Same product. Yeah. Okay. Same history and everything else. So I don't have to obviously go through that process. Right. Also too, if you notice the... Comes in a, in, the a in more of a Drambuie bottle. So yeah. the five year is like a regular 750 kind of tall and lean kind of mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. uh, the 12 year is more of a short it's and squat. stout yeah. kind of process. And it also has like, obviously a nice little seal on there. Yeah. I like that. That's good. Yeah. There okay. we go. Okay, okay, so this is the 12-year-old, and again, this is Demir rum, so it's made with, like, the brown sugar molasses. Mm -hmm. So, okay, smell? Much more brandy cognac-y. Yep, you're right. Um, there's still not, like, I can smell the booze, but it's not, like, I think that's just the brandy cognac -y smell. It's not, it's not present by itself. Now, I don't know about you, but is it, like, less buttery? Definitely. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's a bit sharper. So the age, yeah, it's going to get a little sharper. It's going to get a little more, uh, mm hmm. All right. So, wow. So it's, it's a little more peppery. Definitely peppery. -er -er. Yep. For sure. I guess when you age it in the barrel, oh, there's some sure. cinnamon in there. Yeah. Cinnamon in there for sure. Um, not as much butter. It's a little, little, yeah, less viscous. It's really nice in its own right, though. And, um, it's weird because it's, it's, I could taste the booze, but it's like no, again, no burn. Yeah, it's, well, so I mean, it's, it's inoffensive, you know. In way, yeah. but it's not the burn, like you know, like. Ugh. Yeah, and that's kind of a good thing. I like that. Nothing mm -hmm. worse, and this is one of the reasons why I don't drink vodka because of the burn. I don't like the burn. Yeah. No, that's very. I like well, that, and it, and it, it seems a bit sweeter as well. Yeah. All right, so, so we're gonna add some ice. ice cubes. Here we go. Add some ice into that. Okay, so let's roll that around. There we go. And by the way, yeah, if you do add ice, folks, just let it swirl around in the glass. Like, have you ever seen people do the brandy thing? You kind of just swirl it around a little yeah. bit in your glass because it's going to open up anything that's in there. And then, yeah, so give it a smell. Okay, so the caramel came out of that for sure. I could definitely smell caramel more prominent now. Mm -hmm. A lot of pepper still. A lot of pepper, but like, I don't smell as much alcohol in it, though. It's softened up on the alcohol department. Yep. And the sweetness comes out more. The sort mm -hmm. of mid-tongue sweetness. Yeah. This is, yeah, so this is actually, so it actually makes it sweeter. Sweeter and again no burn, so it's a it's a good yeah, thing. It's quite pleasant, but yeah. I think yeah, I mean I think with this one actually, I mean and it's it's close, but I think I kind of like it more on the rocks. Yeah, so this would be the reverse. Yeah. So the five year recommendation for that is neat because it seems like the ice kind of washes it out, mm -hmm. um, and then the twelve year it actually kind of adds to it, brings out some more like brings more, more of the caramel and, and the subtleties. Yeah. And um, the good thing about these both of these is that there's almost like no burn, and you know. For people that are not heavy drinkers, this is a good thing. Yeah, well, and it mutes the the cinnamon as well with the ice. Yeah, because um, right. like the it's, cinnamon it's, was no a pepper. little bit a little bit too strong initially, like like right. without uh, like neat. Yeah. Um. So no, very nice. Yeah, because it, it's, it's okay to have a little bit of peppery. I find in the background, like a hint of it. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the foreground, it's it's yeah, it sort yeah. of takes away from everything else, right? Yeah. It kind of re reminds me of this time I was I was in. Uh, cubs you know like cub scouts as uh, they say down <laughs> south and i uh, went on a, a camping trip and it was the middle of winter now i mean this is out in bc but right. we were on we were on a mountain we were on a ski hill or like a ski mountain so we were in snow and everything okay and uh you know we'd been out you know doing very various you know cub scouting things you know all day and like tobogganing it was a great time uh, but we were all pretty, you know, exhausted by the end of the day. And uh, so we had a great big, almost a cauldron, right? But a great big pot full of, like, Lipton noodle soup, right? So it's like right. the little thin noodles, but, like, lots of it. And uh, we kids, like, we were just devouring it with lots of bread and stuff. But I was I was a bit of a dawdler back in the day. I know, shocking. Uh, <laughs> you can uh, come on. Quiet you. Um, and uh, and so I was the last one to to get soup. Um, oh no! And no no no! And it was fine. Like you know, it was put into the bowl. But then that was the last of the soup. Right. And I had my head turned for like two seconds, and one of my idiot quote unquote friends decided to be really funny to dump five packets of pepper into it. Oh no! And let me tell you, I was uh -oh. so hungry. You ate it anyway. I ate it, but boy, oh boy. Oh, my Lord. You don't want too much pepper. No, no, no. no. You don't want too much pepper. 
So there's a story for you folks who are like, what that rum's all about. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it also just brings to mind that kids are monsters. <laughs> I've noticed, actually, this is an observation that mm. uh, since you've been drinking rum that, uh, hmm. you know, way back in the days there, Craigie, yeah. uh, when I was a Boy Scout <laughs> there, you know. Uh, it brings out the storyteller in me, you know. <laughs> Like, there should be a fireplace going somewhere, like, yeah. you know, crack, crack, crack. Well, in fact, I'm starting to have difficulty seeing straight, <laughs> should, uh, you know, it should has we... nothing to do with the rum. <laughs> so this is the end of part one of the Rum Tasting Show. Stay tuned next month for part two of this great episode. And hey, please check out the rum page on our website with all the details of all the rums that we used on this show. Well... I don't know about you, but I got informed. Guys, hey, guys, where's my drink? 